Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rocky News, Will's World, that wacky world which I live in. Um, just been away for a week, so got back. Jeez, there's been a few interesting bits going on. Even the cat is crying about them. Um, I see Chris Patterson, who's left Gloucester, gone back to Edinburgh, has criticised the Guinness Premiership. He says that the Magnus, Magnus is a more positive, more attacking brand of rugby, and from a spectator's point of view, certainly better to watch. <clears throat> There's no relegation and no one cares. Um, but he's quoted as saying that, uh, about Edinburgh, on the field and off the field it has changed massively in 12 months, but I never really felt as if I'd left. Well, you didn't really, did you? I mean, to be cruel, six starts for Gloucester, I think your mind was elsewhere. Don't slag off our Guinness Premiership, you bastard. Um, O'Neill, good old Aussie, has uh, been having a bit of a go about the old elves, hasn't he? Says that uh, the New Zealand South Africa tests were far more impressive than the ones that went before. Surprising that, isn't it? The best two sides in the world produce some good rugby. But the old Aussie, he won't, uh, he won't be having it. He's, uh, he's having a go at the Northern Hemisphere. Surprised that. Um, because we're sort of just refusing to uh, to use them, aren't we? And uh, I love it though. But you know, and he's getting all getting all arsy because we're refusing, saying you know that's not a good way to behave. It's not very grown up. Well, Brian Moore, with his classic, as only Brian Moore can, with his Yorkshire logic, has shot him down in flames. I love this. Talking about the refusal to do it. It is perfectly possible for a refusal to enter into this process to be in the best interests of the world game. Not doing something that appears to you to be arrant nonsense is usually called common sense. <laughs> Under O'Neill's logic, it would be wrong to refuse to stick your hand in a fire because others have done it. Love it. So, stick that in your pipe and smoke it, O'Neill. Um, Justin Marshall has uh, joined the Exodus to France, along with Collins and Carter and Brian Kelleher. They're all heading over there, aren't they? So he's left the uh, Ospreys. And uh, I did see a quote that uh, the reason he left Wales was he was sick of the deviant sexual practices. Not really. Um, but, you know, actually, why would a Kiwi ever say that, eh? <laughs> um, Brian Smith, New England backs coach, attack coach. Do we need one? Yes. Um, not a bad resume, actually. I looked at he's done the Aussie Sevens team, he's done the Brumbies, he's done London Irish, done Bath. Aussie Sevens team, Brumbies. I mean, so he's gone from third world poverty to Bath. He's seen a contrast, hasn't he? Posh and uneducated. Poor and terribly rich. Uh, anyway, I think it's a good appointment, good news. Looking back, uh, New Zealand... Against South Africa, good win for South Africa. Have to say they dominated. I was surprised that the scoreline was so close by the end. Um, I think, being honest, if you look at them, if they had a bit more creativity and incision in the backs, they would have scored more. Should have scored more. New Zealand, they're a little bit lightweight in the tight five when they lose a few, aren't they? Uh, and they really did struggle. Um, I think they struggled in the balance as well without McCaw around, although in the first test they managed to cover, they managed to cover that up. South Africa, I think if they had more fluidity at 9-10 uh, and the inside backs, then it would be, a, be an amazing team. But still, great win for them. For New Zealand, back to the drawing board, probably just actually the perverse way what, what they need. A real bit of a kick up the arse, have a review of uh, bits and pieces and, uh, and, and the style of play. Um, need a bit more thinking, I think, under real pressure again uh, in terms of some, some areas of their game. But looking forward to the, uh, the box Aussie game. See the boxer made a few changes. Spies is back in. Oh, even more pace and power in the back row. Stain is in. Um, so uh, intellectual capacity of the backs goes up. Uh, and Percy's out, 15. So uh, a bit more attacking options, I think. And the Aussies, well, they've got Sharp back, Takiri back, and uh, Paolo back. Geez, you've got to ask the question, isn't there? Scrum time. How are they going to deal with that? Line out time. How are they going to deal with the box there? And the physicality of the uh, the South African backs, I think you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be huge from an Aussie point. They'll come up with something, but 
I think if the South Africans uh, haven't been on the uh, on the beer all week, they're going to be firm favourites. You see, we wouldn't do things like that. I remember uh, back in Sete Frica, uh I haven't gone through. I haven't told this story before. I don't think I've alluded to it on one of my blogs. But um, I remember we played Transvaal and we lost. Um, we scored a perfectly good try. I scored a perfectly good try. I know because it was. I think it's the only try I've ever scored. Uh, I chased a kick. Obviously, I didn't run anywhere with it. Uh, anyway, the referee, as I touched it down, I looked around and he was looking straight at me, but then he turned away and said he was unsighted. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, so we lost pretty pissed off in the changing room. That was the weekend before the first test. We lost all three Saturday games. Things weren't going well. Francois walks in. And, uh, you know, we're lying. You know, you can imagine the changing room. I'm lying on the floor, Dean Rich, the all the boys around. And he goes, tell you, I just wanted to thank you for the game, mate. You know, I think potentially you're a very good side. You know, we do. We think potentially you're a very good side. I've never heard anything like that. Anyway, he finished his speech. didn't really listen to anything else. And I just said to Dean Richards and the forwards, I want that bastard. And I want him kicked from one end of the pitch to the next. There was other, other language involved, but I wanted him badly. And so we played in, in Pretoria. And uh, we weren't obsessed with it, um, apart from the fact that all our kickoffs. Wherever he stood on the pitch, that's where we were kicking off to. He could have stood under the post and we would have kicked it high and long and because he was going to be the one taking the ball. And I do remember the start of this test match because uh, it was a great kickoff from Rob. Uh, went high, went straight to him and, and for some reason he called. And he took it and I have to say I got quite close to the rock. I didn't get involved, got quite close. And he had the shit kicked out of him. Um, with a few choice comments. But uh, it'd be, we'd been wound up as well because it was one of those moments where, you know, Francois had given his speech. And this is what I'm talking about. There's a, South Africans are confident. but So we're lying in there. Francois had walked out. And I'm sort of doing my nut, doing my hair, sorry. And uh, and this guy comes in, you know, this was about 30 minutes later, and sort of said, uh, come on, I want you all out to this changing room. And I sort of looked to myself, so, yeah, we will soon. No, now. I want you at now. And I said, I'm sorry, uh, who are you? I can't remember his first name, but his second name was Late. I had an idea, because I'm bright like that, he was related to Louis. He was his son. I said, that's very good, uh, Mr. Late. I said, uh, you wanting to sweep up? And didn't go down well. He said, no, I am manager, I'm in charge of this stadium. So Dino or something said, well, go and charge it then. And uh, he threw a fit. So we were wound up, so you can imagine. So we kicked the shit out of Francois all this game and actually managed to win in, in Pretoria. Uh, but being highly professional, we went on the piss. Big time. And uh, I do remember uh, we pinched our security guys because we used to have these armed policemen with us uh, all the time out there. About four of them. We pitched, pinched their combi van at three in the morning. And uh, I, I was driver, nominated driver. I think because I was the least pissed out of about the six of us who were in there. I was absolutely right. Um, we we crashed it quite a lot, um, and ended up it wouldn't go, so we left it and had to walk back to to our hotel. But um, because we were highly tuned athletes, um, we never recovered. Got stuffed in the second test. Uh, so I'm just thinking the box, of course, will not have done that. Will not have been on the piss. Um, so my prediction would be that they will beat the Aussies. So another kiss of death. Although uh, I got the last one. Did I get the last one right? Uh, who cares? No, I didn't, did I? I don't think I've got anything right. Story of my life. See you next week.